Hi, welcome to another edition of the Alan Rosenberg Show, and it's time for another episode of one of my favorite series on my channel, and it's what I call Time Capsule, Favorite Albums by Year. And what I do is, within the year that I'm in, in 10-year increments, I go back in time and I pick a year, and then I show you, from my collection, my favorite albums of that year, and then I end it with the top 10. So basically, at the end of this series, you're going to have my history of rock and roll. You literally can pick a year, and it's nice and easy because it's one video per year. So if you check it out right now, there are 16 episodes, uh, and you can see I do it in 10-year increments. So we just started 2024, so this year I'm going to be doing 1974, 84, 94, 04, and 2014. And the other day I did 1974, that means today we're going to be doing... 1984, not quite the year that was 1974, but still a real good year, uh, and you're going to see that. Now, in, two, in 1984, I own 78 albums in my database that came out in 1984. Out of those 78 albums, I'm going to quickly show you 36 of them, and then I'm going to end the uh, video with my top 10 based on play. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, check out playlists. There's a whole playlist for Time Capsule favorite albums by year. All right, let's go alphabetical order with the ones that are not top 10. Um, but all of these, I don't have to say they're great because, of course, they're great. They're, I love these. These are my favorite albums of 19, 1984. So here's uh, the ones that are not top 10. Uh, alphabetical order. I was in college, by the way, in 1984, and this guy was huge. I remember when he broke with Cuts Like a Knife. That's a real good record. But in 1984, Brian Adams put out Reckless, and man, this album is just chock full of hit after hit after hit, and it's a really, really good record, you know? Um, Brian Adams with Reckless. Um, David Bowie, I already did a full-length video just on this album. This is the album tonight. I have, a, I, I think, a really good series also called Treasure or Trash. Uh, pretty much discusses uh, albums that are considered amongst the worst albums of an artist's career. And tonight is up there. But I did a whole video on this album. I actually think this album is okay. So check out that video. But there it is, David Bowie's 1984 release. Tonight, uh, Love and the Alien, great track. A couple of real good songs on this album. Um, get the remastered with bonus tracks, because this has This Is Not America and Absolute Beginners on it, which are the two best songs on the album, and they weren't actually even on the album originally. So my tip for you to that there. 1984 was a big year for the Cars, um, and this is a CD... Reissue of their great album, Heartbeat City. This was a huge album for them. Um, I actually think it's their best album besides their debut. I mean, this is the album that's got lots of hits, lots of good videos. Hello Again, Magic, Drive, You Might Think, Why Can't I Have You, Heartbeat City. Yeah, this is a killer Cars album. <clears throat> okay, whose shirt am I wearing? That's Ray Davies, and Ray Davies had a interesting little movie that came out that year. Not a full length. I have it on Laserdisc. And this was the soundtrack called Return to Waterloo. Um, basically a Kinks album in a sense without Dave Davies on it. Um, but a lot of really good songs on it that are going to look familiar if you're a Kinks fan, which we'll get to a little bit later on. But this is a really good soundtrack if you could find it. It's a kind of a, a little known thing, but Expectations... Lonely Hearts, uh, Return to Waterloo. Every song in this album is really strong. Return to Waterloo from the great Ray Davies, one of my favorites. Bob Dylan put out a live album that year. Uh, it's definitely not considered amongst his best, but I actually really like it. Um, there's the set list, and it was a big tour for him at that time. Uh, I hope he does an archives, uh, a bootleg series for this tour. And puts out a much better release. Just look at the band he had. You know who that is right there? Mick Taylor on guitar. Ian McLagan on, on keyboards. You're talking Rolling Stones right there. Colin Allen, Greg Sutton. He had a great band. Um, so this is the album Real Live. And this CD, unfortunately, doesn't do that tour justice. But hopefully he will get around to a bootleg series from that really cool tour. 
All right, let's keep going. We're up to the letter F. And Foreigner, they released Agent Provocateur. It was a real big album. Uh, not one of my favorite Foreigner albums. That was just a killer song. But I Want to Know What Love Is was the smash hit uh, ballad from that album. And I think that song is absolutely incredible. Uh, that's one of those songs that gives me chills every time when that gospel chorus kicks in. Amazing track from Agent Provocateur. Uh, Don Hunley is becoming a really big solo artist in his own right with Building the Perfect Beast. Uh, real good record. You know, The Boys of Summer is a classic. But also, you know, Sunset Grill is on this. Driving with your eyes closed. All she wants to do is dance. Real strong record from Don Henley. Joe Jackson, uh, kind of a, today's world, almost forgotten. But what a great artist, you know. Um, and artist with a capital A because he kept changing his sound and doing different styles. And Body and Soul, this is an amazing album. Um, great cover with that jazzy kind of cover. This is a killer album. Uh, you can get, you can't get what you want until you know what you want. Uh, Be my number two. Great, great album from Joe Jackson. Now, talked about Treasure and Trash, where I talk about albums that are amongst the worst albums in an artist's career. No doubt, this is the worst album in Jethro Tull's career under wraps, and this is the CD. I'm not going to get too much into this album because I did a whole video on it. But Jethro Tull's under wraps. Came out in 1984, and I'll just end it by saying I hope that they continue their box set and do a re-recording, remix of that album with live drums, and it would change it drastically. Joan Jett, uh, she put out Glorious Results of a Misspent Youth, uh, highlighted by her cover of Cherry Bomb. Uh, this is a twofer album, actually, two separate CDs. But I Love You, Love, I Love You, Love Me, Love... Whatever the hell the name of that is. It's a pretty good record. Uh, not one of her best, but good stuff from Joan Jett. Uh, Marillion, they put out Fugazi, their second album, with that great artwork. Punch and Judy, Assassin, Incubus, Marillion. Let's keep going as we had a little collapse there, David. But we'll keep going for now. Uh, Van Morrison put out a great live record, um, live at the Grand Opera House, Belfast. Uh, back at that time in his career, I thought he was really, really hot. Uh, cleaning windows. This is just a beautiful vision. This is a terrific, terrific live album that I don't really hear too many people talk about. But that's a great one, if you like Van Morrison, certainly back in the day, that's for sure. There we go. Straighten that mess up. Alan Parson Project put out Vulture Culture. Actually, not one of my favorite of uh, their albums, his album, but this is the album that's got Dave's on, Dave, Days on Numbers, The Traveler, which is not only my favorite song off this album, but it's actually a go-to track. I used to do videos for friends and family, and that song was in every video I ever made. Days on Numbers, an incredible song. R.E.M. put out Reckoning, and this is it on CD. Uh, remastered version of that, uh, South Central Rain, Pretty Persuasion, Time After Time, doesn't get much better than that, don't go back, uh, don't go back to Rockville, this is a great album, but then again, all these albums are great, so it's kind of, well, almost all these albums are great, Under Wraps is not great, Ario Speedwagon put out Wheels Are Turning, all right, this is not great either, but it's pretty good, uh, One Lonely Night, that's a great track, Live Every Moment, Can't Fight This Feeling, that was another big REO Speedwagon ballad, but I was always a fan of REO Speedwagon because I was into them before they made it. So um, when they finally made it, I was kind of kind of psyched for them. Uh, when I was in college, their EP, Scandal, with Patti Smythe was huge with Goodbye to You. And this was their full-length album with The Warrior, the title track, Beat of a Heart, Hands Tied. Those first three songs are the best songs on the album. Then it kind of peters away a little bit, but still good stuff from Patti Smythe. And Scandal with Warrior. Now, I did a ranking of U2, and as you probably know from my channel, I think U2 is in the Mount Olympus of rock and roll with the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and the Who and Led Zeppelin. I put U2 up there as well. Call me crazy. People wrote in when I did the ranking. But for whatever reason, and I, I was around when this album came out, I saw U2 on the war tour. 
But this was the Unforgettable Fire, and for whatever reason, this album just never grabbed me as much as the other one says. Doesn't mean it's not a great album, but it's just not near the top of my favorite U2 album. Uh, with that said, obviously, you know, Pride in the Name of Love is as good as it gets with U2 or anybody. Um, another really big song from this album was Bad, and they, it got a lot of play here in New York when that album came out. Man, it was played constantly on radio, and I never really got it. I just think it's a long, drag that song that builds up, but Bad was just never one of my favorites. So the Unforgettable Fire from U2. And Van Halen, there you go, Steve, uh, Steve Harold, uh, 1984, a huge hit from them, and yeah, a great album, I mean, Jump, Panama, Hoffa Teacher with that amazing drum intro, I'll Wait, huge record from Van Halen. And what else we got uh, before we get to the top 10? Well, we got Steve Ray Vaughan in Couldn't Stand the Weather, I thought this was a great record, and loved that guitar look of Couldn't Stand the Weather, what a guitar look. But Scuttle Button, Voodoo Child, his copy, Cold Shot. Yeah, this is a great record. The Water Boys. I've become a really big fan over the years. And this is an album called A Pagan Place, uh, which is, i got to go back to this. Um, this album it didn't grab me initially like the other ones did, but still really good. A Pagan Place. This is a remastered version from The Water Boys. And Roger Waters, uh, his first solo record, The Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking. This album, to me, is... I just never could grab into it. I tried. It's, it's typical Roger Waters. Interesting story, interesting lyrics, but there's like very little melody on that album. It just drags on. It's like a 45-minute song that just doesn't grab me. What can I tell you? Zebra put out their second album, No Telling Lies, not a... A debut Zebra album is one of my favorite albums of all time. This album, not quite as good for sure. Wait Until the Summer's Gone was always played on local radio here. Um, and Bears is a great track. I have the 45 of that. That's a really good one. Lullaby is good. Um, the best song on there is But No More. You want to check out Zebra that you don't might not know. But No More is almost like progressive, and it's great. So uh, Zebra, no telling lies. So we got some vinyl as well here. Let's talk about some of these vinyl albums that are not top 10. Uh, Deep Purple put out their reunion of the classic uh, Mach 2 lineup. Um, this is a great Deep Purple album, Perfect Strangers on vinyl. Uh, it was great to have them back, and they delivered, especially with Knocking at Your Back Door and the title track, actually, Perfect Strangers. That's a real good one. I like that one. Uh, Lou Reed put out New Sensations that year. Interesting album cover back in the video day. And this was a good release. Um, I Love You, Suzanne. That was kind of like a radio hit. Just here in New York. But better than that is this album. Now, this is kind of hard to find. I don't think I've ever seen it on CD. This is Lou Reed, live in Italy. Here's the gatefold vinyl. And this is an amazing live record. Um, I'm guessing it's out on CD somewhere now, but I've never seen it. And some great versions of Velvet Underground tracks, plus his solo stuff. And he has just got a killer, killer band. Uh, Robert Queen, Fernando Sanders, Saunders, Fred Mayer, and drums. Mm. Lou Reed. This is the Lou Reed live album, uh, besides like Rock and Roll Animal. So uh, if you're looking around and you ever see this one, get that. And last but not least, before we get into the top 10, Kim Wilde. Remember Kim Wilde? I got some clippings there. But Kim Wilde had a really big hit with Kids in America, Water on Glass. Her first album is, well, I think it was her first album. First album in America, anyway, was just killer. This was her next album called Teases and Dares. was not quite the hit. Now, it is very dated. It's really got that 80s uh, sound without the real drums. But there's some really good stuff on here. Um, uh, Gopher was a kind of a hit and the touch but my favorite track on here that nobody knows is a thing called Fit In check out Fit In from Kim Wilde Teases and Dares good stuff alright so let's get into the top 10 the top 10 albums for me of 1984 based on play how much did I play them at number 10 David Gilmore and his second solo record called About Face. 
Um, I thought this was a great record. I know there was a, I used to have a VHS concert from that tour as well. And he was, play, Townsend was playing with him as well at some points. So, and uh, uh, Until We Sleep, Murder, Love on the Air, great track, Blue Light, uh, All Lovers Are Deranged. This is a killer album. Um, some people kind of knocked it. They said, well, it's a little bit maybe AOR-ish, album-oriented radio. Who gives a shit? It's a really good record. Uh, check out Murder. Well, it's a really good record. About Face from David Gilmore, number 10. At number 9, we were talking about that Ray Davies album. Well, they released an album called Word of Mouth. Um, it was one of their final ones on Arista when they had their golden period here in America, really successful. Um, this album kind of is overlooked, but it's a really strong record. Do It Again, cool video of that. Good Day, Living on a Thin Line as an amazing track, a Dave Davies track. And a lot of these songs you see were on that Dave Davies uh, Return to Waterloo. So here it is as a Kinks album. Um, this is a, a strong record. It's it's not as good as, you know, Low Budget or Misfits or Sleepwalk or, or Give the People What They Want, State of Confusion. To me, that was a golden period for the Kinks. They really were big in America and they deserved it. Um, but this album's still really strong. And this, for me, was my number nine album of the year. Number eight, if you know my channel, you know I'm a big fan of Carla Olsen. And you're like, who's Carla Olsen? Carla Olsen and the Techstones. She's great. And this was her album, Midnight Mission. And this is a really, really excellent album. If you don't know who she is, and you probably don't, do yourself a favor and just watch the video on YouTube of Midnight Mission. You're going to thank me. It's a fantastic song. To me, it's a song that everybody should know. Um, the title track of this album is Killer, but it's a really good record, Standing in the Line, um, Hands of the Working Man, Number One is to Survive, Clean Cut Kids, a Dylan track. Uh, this is a really good record, which is why, for me, it's at number eight. At number seven, number seven album of the year for me is Purple Rain from Prince. You couldn't escape this album in 1984. And this is a four-disc edition with a DVD and a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Prince, to me, I really like Prince. I have a bunch of his albums. He's more, in general, I appreciate his talent than really listen to him that much. But Purple Rain certainly is a monster. And, you know, Let's Go Crazy, Take Me With You, um, When Doves Cry. I mean, nothing ever sounded. That was so original. Nothing sounded like that. And it's a great story. Great song, obviously. I Would Die For You, Bay Me Miss Star. And Purple Rain, the title track, one of the greatest songs, in my opinion, in the history of rock and roll. Yep. So Purple Rain, the album, at number seven. At number six is one of the greatest concert films I ever saw in my life. Uh, it really got me into that band. And the soundtrack, then they finally reissued the soundtrack as a deluxe edition. Uh, we're talking the talking heads and stop making sense. If you want... Great live albums. Um, this is a great live album. And get the deluxe edition like this. Um, for me, this is by far the best Talking Heads album. When I feel like listening to the Talking Heads, this is the album I listen to. At number six, the Talking Heads and Stop Making Sense. At number five was a great return to form, The Pretenders, their third album. But after their second album, of course, uh, she had fired... Um, James Honeyman Scott left the band. He died from an overdose. She had fired Pete Farnan, the bass player. And this album had a messy start. She had different people helping out. And she finally recruited um, Robbie McIntosh, played the guitar, and uh, Malcolm Forster. And they became the new version of The Pretenders, and they came back really strong with Learning to Crawl, their third record. Um, you know, Back on the Chain Gang is one of the all-time great songs. The flip side was My City Was Gone. But even beyond that, you know, uh, Middle of the Road and Show Me and Thin Line Between Love and Hate. And, of course, 2,000 Miles has become a Christmas anthem. So great record from the Pretenders. That is at number five. At number four is on vinyl. Um, I'm a really big fan of the Jay Giles Band and their lead singer and leader, uh, a guy that I say is the second greatest frontman in the history of rock and roll behind Mick Jagger. You heard that right. If you ever saw Jay Giles or him solo, you would agree. Peter Wolf. And this was his first solo record called Lights Out. Now, this does have 
a bit of a date, dated 80s sound, but it's a killer record. I still play this album to this day. It's the kind of album you put this on, you can't not dance around in your house. I'm talking about the title track, Lights Out. I Need You Tonight. Ooey Diddly Bop. This is all great, great stuff. And there's even a duet uncredited with Mick Jagger, a song called Pretty Lady. Go check out the duet Pretty Lady from this album, Mick Jagger with Peter Wolf. He's uncredited. It's a great, fun song. Lights Out, proudly my number four album of the year. Go check it out. A little dated, but he's got a great solo career, by the way. Number three, I was away in college when we discovered Madonna. Her first album was a huge hit, obviously, and was really fun, you know. And then she put out the second album, and the second album's better than the first album. We're talking about Like a Virgin. Um, this album was all over the place. And listen, even a rocker like me loved Madonna at that time, and this album, Like a Virgin. It's a great track. Uh, even the ballads, Love Don't Live Here Anymore, is an amazing song. But, you know, uh, Material Girl, every Dress You Up, everybody was dancing around to this uh, in the clubs. And Stacy, you're not watching my videos, but if you're watching my video right now, I'm thinking of you because you always love Madonna as well. Madonna, Like a Virgin, number three album of the year. At number two... Well, if you know my channel, you know that I'm a huge fan of Dire Straits. And um, this was their first official live record, Alchemy. And this is a two-CD version of it. It was very much a different band. They had a new drummer in there, Terry Williams. And Terry Williams was a very hard-hitting drummer. He was like a real powerful rock drummer, unlike their previous drummer, Pick Withers, who was more like a, a, a jazzy kind of a feel kind of a drummer. And this is just a really excellent live record. I remember watching the video, uh, the whole concert live from the Hammersmith Odeon, no overdubs. This is pure raw dire straits, and they are a rock band, but a jamming rock band. You know, uh, Sultan's a Swing is like over 10 minutes on this album. Once Upon a Time in the West, the opening track's over 10 minutes. But you get a live version of Expresso Love, Romeo and Juliet, Love Over Gold, Private Investigations, Tunnel of Love is epic on this album. Uh, solid Rock, Telegraph Road. It ends with the theme from Local Hero. I'm getting chills thinking about it. The number two album of the year for me by far was Alchemy, Dire Straits. And I still listen to this album. Uh, one of the great live records of all time for sure. What's the number one album of the year? There was no escaping it. And that was Bruce Springsteen. Born in the USA. I'm going to tell you a funny story. So when this album came out, my friend Sandy was a huge Bruce Springsteen fan, much bigger than me. And he was into Springsteen for a, way before I did. The day this album came out, or that week, uh, Sandy invited me over, and we did a listening, a blind listening to this album. I'll never forget it. He played it to me, and I remember saying to him, yeah, it's really good, but Sandy, I don't hear any singles. <laughs> That's a true story. Of course, this whole album was a hit single. Go figure. Um, the funny thing about this album is this is a Springsteen album I never listened to. And it's got two songs on there that I kind of despise. I didn't even like them back in the day. I just bought the title track, Born in the USA. If that thing comes on, I got to turn it off right away. And I hate Dancing in the Dark, which was, of course, the monster hit single. Just can't stand that song. But there's no denying the you know, it doesn't get any bigger than this. Every damn song pretty much is a hit single. And it's hard in retrospect now to appreciate it because I never want to hear it again because it's just so commercial and popular. But you can't do that. You, you got to appreciate for what it is. And I will tell you that my favorite song in this album was always Downbound Train, which was not a hit single, uh, and No Surrender. Um, but listen, you know, every damn song is pretty incredible, except I hate the title track and Dancing in the Dark. By far, number one album of the year for me, as far as play, because of the success of it, was Born in the USA. So there you have it, folks, the top 10 of the year. What were they? Number one, Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA. Number two, Alchemy from Dire Straits. Number three, Like a Virgin Madonna. Number four, Lights Out, Peter Wolf. Number five, Learning to Crawl from the Pretenders. Number six, The Live Talking Heads album, Stop Making Sense. Number seven, Purple Rain from Prince. Number eight, Paula Olsen and the Techstones, Midnight Mission. Number nine, The Kinks, Ray Davies. 
Word of mouth. And number 10, David Gilmore's second solo record, About Face, plus a whole bunch of other good stuff. It was a good year, wasn't it? I think it was. 1984. Let me know your thoughts. What were your favorite albums? What did I miss? Remember, I still got a whole bunch of albums down there that I didn't show, but I'm sure you can come up with stuff that maybe I don't have. So uh, let me know what you think. Most importantly, thanks for watching. Hit subscribe if you're new. Check out my other videos. Remember, there's a playlist called Favorite Albums by Year Time Capsule. Uh, it's like a history of rock and roll, at least my history of rock and roll. And uh, it's one video per year, so it's nice and easy. Uh, as always, stay safe, stay healthy. I'm getting a little bit better. My voice is coming back to normal. And uh, have a great night. See you next time on the Al Rosenberg Show.